Okay, so here is the list of the virtual machines that I already created. So basically, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight virtual machines, and uh, all these virtualization holes. Um, my typical machine name is uh, called LiDT. All right, and then I already installed with uh, all the remote desktop services role. I installed with Windows Server 2008 R2, and then for the client operating system, I'm installing as Windows 7. Okay. This is the uh, summary of the roles that I install. Okay. Uh, one thing is uh, you need to take note is uh, BDI 01 Win 7 is a personal virtual desktop, which I, you also can call it as a static virtual desktop. And then uh, for BDI 02 and BDI 03 is a dynamic virtual desktop. Right? Dynamic. For initial configurations to save time, uh, I already create all the virtual machines, and then on the uh, on the active directory, I also created a, v, a VDI user groups. Okay, I created a user called VDI user one, VDI user two, and then uh, VDI user three. Right. Okay, the VDI user one is going to use for static, okay, uh, virtual desktop, and VDI user two and three, I'm going to use it for dynamic virtual desktop, right? And then I need to create a VDI group, okay. I'm going to call it as VDI groups, okay. which is going to consist of VDI user 1, 2, and 3 inside this group. Right? And then on the physical machines, I also install all the virtualization holes. And then uh, for the rest of the virtual machines, I'm going to show you how to configure uh, the installation as well. Right? So this is the setting that you need to configure on each of the virtual machines. Right? You need to uh, enable remote desktops and then uh, you need to add uh, VDI groups into local remote desktop user groups. Okay? And then you need to modify the registry. Okay? You need to set uh, allow remote RPC equal to 1. And then uh, you Next thing is you need to create a firewall exception to allow remote services management. Okay. And then lastly, you're going to execute a script, okay, the WMIC script, which allows uh, for add permissions to the RDP protocol. Once you have done that, you need to restart your client virtual machine. Okay. And then if you are creating a dynamic virtual machine, Okay, you need to uh, do a snapshot. Right. Don't worry about the the step of uh, each of the configurations. I'm going to show you in the next uh, in the next video on how to configure VDI using remote desktop. Oh, all right. So basically, uh, let's go through uh, finish all the configurations that I need to perform. Okay, on the RD session holes, uh, you. Do the same thing, you enable remote desktop and then you add the VDI groups into the local remote desktop user group. Okay. And then uh, this uh, the second one and the third one is the setting that you're going to configure on the computer management. And lastly you're going to uh, Use the RD session host configuration to set uh, the RD session host as redirect mode. Once you are done that, you go to RD uh, connection broker. Okay, on the computer management, you need to add the uh, RDS gateway okay, to the TS web asset. Okay, to allow the RDS gateway okay, the permission. 
and then you are going to use Audi connection broker to configure the Audi virtualization host, Audi session host, Audi gateways, and we're going to use the broker to create the personal virtual desktop which we call as statics. And then the next one is the virtual desktop pool, which normally you call it as dynamic, right? So now uh, from here, from the configuration, you will be able to see that RD connection broker is a central management, right? Which is going to connect to all your RD virtualization roles together. Right? And then uh, on the RD web access and RD gateways, okay, you need to use a remote app program to add a uh, RDS broker as a source to use. Okay. And the next thing that you need to do is you need to export the RD gateway SSL certificate okay, uh, from the RD gateway and then you use this certificate and import it to all the client computers which you're going to connect to the BDI. Once you have done that, right, uh, in order for you to access uh, by using remote, uh, by using web access, you can key in this URL, alright, https uh, rds gateway web, okay, dot ms for you dot info slash rd web. That's the end of my presentation. So basically, I already covered the concept of what, what is uh, BDI. Okay, I also cover about uh, talking about the infrastructure that you require in order for you to set up BDI using remote access services. Besides that, I also talk about the guest VM considerations that you need to take note. Okay, uh, depend on the deployment uh, type that you choose, either static or dynamic, right? And then there's uh, some requirements to which you need to uh, take note. And then I also explain about the demos on how to build BDI using remote desktop services. Right? So do catch up with uh, uh, another video. On I will show you on how to build a BDI using remote desktop services. Right? Uh, basically, uh, in this session, I got three videos. Okay, the uh, the first two video is showing you how to access VDI. The third video is uh, talk about how to build VDI using remote access services. Alright, I hope you enjoy uh, my video and hope that you learn on how to build VDI using remote access services. For those of you who are very keen on uh, learning on how to configure remote access services, you can go to Microsoft Atlas, okay, to view the configuration step by step or you can visit my blog alright uh, so far I already finished uh, writing a blog about part 1 until part 5 and then okay so the part 6 is talking about uh, how to create a personal virtual desktop and uh, dynamic virtual desktop right and then uh, this is the URL for uh, how to access to VDI which I already created previously alright uh, so do get the, the third link from the Facebook MVUG okay, to learn about how to build VDI using remote desktop services. Right? So that's all. Uh, for those of you who have any questions, all right, please feel free to please feel free uh, for those of you who have any questions, please feel free to uh, write an email okay to my email uh, to my email. Right? So I can be contacted by uh, this email address. Right. Right. Thank you for your time and good luck.